Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna be reviewing this super sexy backup camera that Halo View sent me. Part one is gonna be an install video because obviously I have to get that done first before I can review it. Part two is gonna be a full comprehensive review of how it works, what the quality of it is, etc., etc. As a disclaimer, this is my first sponsored product. Woo! Halo View uh, contacted me, they liked the channel, they sent it to me. Thank you guys. It looks like an awesome product so far. They've got good reviews on Amazon on it. It's got all the features and capabilities of some brand name backup cameras, but at a much reduced price. So we're gonna see, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Let's get into the install. So this is the Halo View 7 inch wired rear camera view system. It comes with a screen, it comes with the camera, and I also got a cable from them to wire it from the back to the front. Notable right out of the box is these cameras actually have microphones and the screen has an onboard speaker in it So I'll be able to have audio from the outside too. That's pretty cool and notable most backup camera systems don't have audio It also has a really wide voltage input range from 10 to 32 volts Which means you can use it on a 12 volt system or you could use it on a 24 volt system, which is kind of cool the camera also has IR LEDs, so you can use it at night. It's got full night vision as well. It's all waterproof and all that. So looks like it has pretty standard specs on it. So the packaging actually slides out. And let's open it up here. All right, we got a user manual. We got some general specs. Some nice foam padding, and here it is. All right, so that is the monitor, and it comes plugged into a DC outlet cable already. Let me dig that out. This stuff is really packed in here. All right, so the cables are kind of wrapped up here, and then we got the camera itself. Wow, that is heavy. Initial impression, this camera is really, really heavy. That is the camera. You can see the IR LEDs. There's four of them. They're pretty big, so it should have pretty decent night vision. That also looks like a pretty large camera, too. I bet it's pretty decent quality. We got what looks to be a really heavy-duty mount for the monitor, I believe. We'll see what that goes into. And then under the foam, we got cables, 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 some thumb screws. Oh, they gave me a tool. And some screws, some more screws. Gotta say, that's kind of a smart idea to tape down the screws at the bottom of the box, guys. Keeps them from going anywhere. I have had that happen before, and it is so unbelievably annoying when you open up a box and screws go all over the place. All right, so this is the monitor up close. We got some nice big buttons with some good tactile feedback on there. It's only got one cord coming out, like a 12-pin cord there. And uh, nothing of note on the sides except the mounting tabs. That other bigger mount I showed earlier can slide onto the back here. So it looks like you have a couple of different good mounting options depending on where you want to put it. You can see it's got one speaker built in there, so that answers any question whether it's stereo or mono. It is definitely a mono speaker and a mono mic. This is the camera. It feels remarkably heavy. It's got these big metal mounting tabs here, but the camera itself, I can tell, feels very heavy too, which I've found in general is a good indicator of quality. It looks like it's pretty well sealed there not going anywhere and you can see that looks like it's going to be the mic input right there there is one cable coming out of it it's got a grommet on there for the pass through already and it's got a weather sealed connector pin i don't know if i would entirely trust that to be 100 percent waterproof but there is an o-ring in there you just can't see it it's really tiny so kind of cool i guess this is not meant to be waterproof because they do give you a little slip-on piece of rubber right here which can slide over the connectors and then I would definitely trust it to be pretty waterproof so cool 
little rubber slippy thing. Bonus points for that. Wow, it's really tight on there though, which I guess is good. All right, this is the wiring harness right here, this big jumbly mess. Actually, it's all pre-wired and it's pretty well laid out as opposed to like stereo wiring harnesses. This is where it plugs in right here, this big connector. And these are where the cameras plug in. As mentioned before, you have three camera inputs. Um, I would kind of rather see a box here than cords, but cords totally work too. Uh, this is where they all junction together. And then over here is where we have our trigger wire. We have our ground and our positive wire. We have our other trigger wires. Points for including a fuse on the positive wire. That's kind of cool. And it's a pretty nice quality waterproof fuse holder too. And there's a fuse already in there. Very nice. It does come with a DC outlet and it does come with a DC plug, which is actually a really cool DC plug because you can turn it on and off right there. I'm not gonna be using the DC plug. I am gonna be hardwiring it into my system, but I think I'm definitely gonna keep this guy for later. That's really cool. Also cool to note, I didn't even have to cut the wires off. It's just got this self crimping plug. Definitely gonna keep that for later too. That's really useful as well. All right, and here we've got the cable to plug the camera into the monitor. It's got that little rubbery thing to seal up the connection on the exterior. Smart move. I definitely trust these with the rubber thing off, but again, you see that super tiny O-ring in there? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily trust that to be waterproof on its own. Got a 10 meter cable. They offer plenty of different sizes. This should be more than enough for my RV. It is good to note that you do need to order this specific type of cable. I don't know if it's a standard cable. I'm pretty sure I've seen this style before, but I don't know what it's called. Leave something in the comments if you guys know what this is called, because actually I would love to get a different video source into this monitor rather than just the cameras. So overall impressions, so far it looks like a pretty sturdy product. I've definitely got everything I need here. So I'm gonna get going forward on the install and we're gonna see how this backup camera works out. All right, so I've started to put it all together. I decided to use that sticky all-in-one mount they have. After cleaning up my dash a little bit and deciding on a location, I think that this is gonna work best. As a footnote, I was actually wrong earlier. This does spin in any direction. It just unlocks when you untighten the ball and it spins at the base. So that's kind of cool. You can mount it any way you want with this little sticky thing. It had 3M sticky tape on the back, which actually worked really, really well in just sticking it on the dash. I did make a couple of changes outside here on the back rack. I moved my box to the center of the rack, made some space for the generator, kind of evened out the weight. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick the backup camera somewhere in here. I don't quite know yet because I wanna test out the angle and see what it looks like, but I'm thinking it's gonna go like right there on the box itself. Here on the inside of the RV, I gotta install this cable, run it from the front of the RV all the way to the back and attach it to the camera. It is worthy to note that these wire ends are not the same. One is female, one is male, so make sure you install them the right way. The male end of this is going to plug into the back of the camera. Down here, I'm gonna run the wire behind there, and then I've got a little hole with a grommet that I made a while back here. I'm gonna fish the wire through there and then come under the RV. Ugh. All right, and once you have the cable pulled through, you're gonna to wanna to connect it to the corresponding cable cord, which in my case is the reverse cord. It's the one that's brown. Screw it on, nice and snug, all set. So this is where the install is gonna get a little bit vehicle specific. You're gonna to have to find a power source and a ground source to tap into. In my RV, I have an accessory panel. Mine looks like this back here. It's a good idea in general to install one of those in your RV. It keeps the wiring a little bit cleaner. I installed one in my RV when I first got it, so I was able to just tap into that as a power source. It's also good to note that the power for the camera is carried by the camera wire. You don't need to tap in the other power source labeled camera. That's just a trigger. So if you wanted to trigger the screen to come on when you went into reverse, you could tap that into the reverse line. 
After that, you're gonna wanna run your wire all the way to the back of the vehicle. It has to go directly to the camera. So find a good route, it shouldn't be that hard. I followed the emergency brake cable on my RV and it was pretty easy to route it. And then install your camera on the back somewhere around car level. Mine is pointed a little bit more level than the camera is designed for so I can see in back of me and I can use it while I'm driving down the road as well. I do like that they included this little sunshade here so it won't get a lot of glare driving down the road. And then this here is what it looks like. So you can see I have an image at the back. It's pretty clear. Things are definitely visible. I've even seen flies going by so it's a pretty decent resolution. You can click the OK button here to turn on and off the guides. I have the guide set so it's about two feet away from my vehicle, which gives me a little bit of buffer zone before I'm gonna hit anything. And again, you can see what I was talking about here. This isn't exactly level with the ground. I have mine pointed up a little bit so I can turn off that guide and while I'm going down the road, I can actually see anybody that's tailgating me. That'll be cool. Maybe I'll put one of those LED message scrollers on the back and I'll be able to type out little things and watch their reactions. So you can see here, it's got the standard options, brightness, contrast, color, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to scroll through the menu just by hitting okay. It does have an auto scan option, which is really useful. I turn that on. So when I turn off the device and then turn it back on, it just automatically switches to the camera instead of having to set it. So now I'm gonna take this bad boy for a little drive around town and I'm gonna see how it works. All right, so this is gonna be drive test number one. Turn that bad boy on. And there is my backup cam. That's pretty useful. And now I can see what's behind me. Well, overall impressions after the first drive, this backup camera rocks. I don't know if I believe them that it's high definition. It's definitely like a 480p feed, but the screen is a nice bright matte, like the old school portable televisions. So you can see it even in direct sunlight. It's really easy to see while you're driving. There's not much motion blur. I really appreciate the fact that it's not fisheye, it's a linear view, so it doesn't give me like a bug eye effect while driving down the road. I think the speaker overall is gonna be kind of useless. It produces some really annoying wind noise when you're going down the road, so I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna leave that off. You can turn it off really easily in the settings. It gets a really good picture even in low light, which it's fairly low light right now. But yeah, I'm impressed. For the money, I can definitely recommend this product. It's well built, it's definitely up to quality par with features of other backup cameras I've seen, and it's probably like half the price. So if you guys are in the market for a backup cam, check out the Halo View backup cameras. You can order them on Amazon, and with the system that I have, you can install up to three cameras. So you could even use it as a security system. I'm definitely impressed for the price point. It's got a great build quality. The image comes out nice and clear. Everything looks like it's nice and tough and it'll last for a long time. Installation was nice and easy. So yeah, that's about all I got for today, guys. That's my review of the Halo View backup camera system. I will see you guys in the next one.